going? Good. Thanks for coming to see me today. <laughs> Thanks for being on the podcast today. So do you want to tell everyone what our theme is for this fortnight? So at the moment we're looking at preparing kids for going off to big school. So if you're in New South Wales, that's off to kindy. If you're in any of the other states, it might be called reception or pre-primary. So it's really that first year of school. And I guess this is a time of year where a lot of families are like eagerly anticipating that their kids are going to make that transition. Some are facing it with a little bit more trepidation because it might be the first child going off to school, so you're not quite sure what it's going to be like. And then there's still a, probably a bunch of people who are undecided whether they're going to send their children to school next year or not. Yeah, okay. So we're talking about school readiness and specifically communication mm. skills and yes. making sure their communication <clears throat> skills are, I guess, up to scratch, on par with where their peers will be. Yes, that's right. Give them the best start possible. Yeah. So if anyone's wanting to check and see if their child is ready for school, what resources do we have available for them? Yeah, so over on the website, we actually have a preschool communication guide. So that is listing all the developmental milestones and all the areas of communication like comprehension, speaking, sounds, social skills, um, pre-literacy skills. And that we've got that from ages three to five. So that's just a really simple checklist you can run through and see if your child is developing those skills on track with others. Plus there's some tips of things that you can do to boost those skills if it's an area that your child's not particularly strong in. So that would probably be the first place to stop and have a look. So that, you know, obviously looking at the four and five year olds will let you know whether your child is kind of developing on track with their peers for starting school. Mm. But if you feel like your child is meeting all those milestones, but you're still going, "Mm, I want a really good transition to school. On our blog, we've got six um, little areas that you can be looking at just to make sure that they're really ready to get going. Yeah, so what are some of those key communication skills? Yeah, well, first of all, as you can imagine, your little child is going into a classroom environment. So suddenly they're surrounded by like a large number of other children, um, plus they've got teachers, plus you've got a really, um, you know, formal program that they're going through. So the number one skill is listening. So we really Mm. want to make sure that school starters can listen. Yeah, yeah. It's a really important skill for life, isn't it? Well, it is. It's um, not just listening to um, what people are saying around them, but it's listening to the big instructions that they need to follow. Plus, it's also the listening skills that they need for starting to develop their sound awareness and their literacy. Yeah, great. So what tips do you have to promote listening skills in kids? Oh, well, there's so many different games and activities and challenges that you can give kids. Yeah. So, for example, simple games like playing Simon Sets or, Mm. you know, what's the time, Mr. Wolf, red light, green light, where they've got to listen and wait for their turn, follow Mm. instructions. That's great because that something like Simon Says just helps them um, pay attention to your facial features and they look at you with anticipation, waiting for what the next move is going to be. So they're really tuned in for listening. Um, Then there's other things like you might be able to send them on a sound scavenger hunt. And, you know, you get them to hear certain sounds and see if they can tell you what they think they are. Mm. Um, Or you can actually just give them like little lists of things to go and find and see if they can listen to what you've said and remember some of those items. So a bit like an information scavenger hunt or looking for particular objects around the house. Yeah. Yeah. You could be doing something like describing an object. Like, for example, I want you to go and find something in the kitchen. It's a fruit. It's round. It's green. It's shiny and crunchy when you eat it go and find it. Mm. So they've had to listen really carefully, plus also start to think about what you might be talking about. Yeah, okay, so it's sort of multifaceted, the the listening part and the following instructions. Yes. Plus it's a game, which is just fun, isn't it? Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. Yeah, so what are some of the other things we should be looking out for? Yeah, so you want them to be able to express their own ideas and Mm. opinions. So that's really looking at their expressive language. Are they able to actually um, put their thoughts and ideas into coherent sentences? Mm. Are they actually able to communicate what their thought process is? So that's things like um, getting a bit involved in storytelling, for example, being able to relate what's happened to them, being able to talk about things in context, Mm. um, just sort of really encouraging them to put themselves forward a little bit. Yeah. Are there any prompts you'd recommend to get kids sharing those sorts of stories about themselves? Yeah, I think that if you can help them set the scene for where their story is taking place. That's really important. 
what kids can do sometimes, or as, as adults, is we focus too much on the detail mm. without having given enough context. And so the other person is sort of left guessing and thinking, I'm not really sure where this is going. But if you can just help kids set the scene, so um, talking about the setting, like where did this happen, when did it happen, who was there, mm. what was going on at the beginning before they tell you actually what the event particularly was. Yeah, so just okay. a few context clues and just helping them by asking them those questions mm. will help them sort of put it all into perspective. Yeah. yeah. And so why is that something that's important? Because mm. I think immediately it doesn't come to mind maybe as like why we're talking about yourself be important, but what is it going on in the brain for them that helps them be school ready? Well, it's really important, as you can imagine, in a classroom that they've got to start, they become, they're becoming their own unique little person. Mm. They do have their own ideas. They do have their own unique experiences. So that we connect with each other by sharing those. So it's really important mm. for their social development. But also on a very basic level, it's just getting their needs and wants met. Yeah. If they're able to explain something that's happened or say something that they need in a really sort of efficient, effective way, mm. uh, it's going to be much easier for the teacher to understand and for them to get what they need. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I suppose that would also translate to reflecting on what they've learned that day, that sort of like ride home from school conversation. Yeah, of yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. What did you learn? What did you get up to? They could tell that story. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's great. And what is another sort of thing we could be looking out for? Well, I guess kind of in line with that, it's vocabulary. Oh, yeah. So we really want kids to have a really wide, strong, robust vocabulary. So it's starting to talk about, so by vocabulary, you just mean like knowledge of words. Yes. And so they have to be able to understand words, but also be able to um, use those words. Mm. So I guess to, in terms of specifically talking about the school context, start teaching them the vocabulary that they'll need for school. Mm. So they need to know what certain things are. You know, if you start to talk about a canteen. What's a canteen? That's true. You yeah. wouldn't really come across that usually, would you? That's right. You know, starting to talk about some of the subject words that they might hear and oh. sort of explaining. Geography. What... Do they yeah. do that in kindy? Well, no, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> some of those things are going to learn along the way. But I guess really to get them ready, we want to teach them how to learn words. Mm. So for some kids, they hear a word once, they hear it used in a sentence, they've got it, they know it. They can use it and off they go. Yes. So other kids who perhaps take a little bit longer to learn language, they need to hear that word, you know, maybe up to a hundred times in the right context before yeah. they go, now I know what that means. Now I get it. And yeah. now I get it. Okay. Um, it's like you hear it once and you kind of get a fuzzy idea about it, but the more you, you hear it used and you hear other people use it in different contexts and you sort of refine your understanding of the word mm. so that um, if you get to a point where you can suddenly use it, say it, repeat it talk about it, explain it to somebody else. Yeah, um, okay. So what are the activities we should be doing to build vocab? Yeah, well, there's so many. So firstly, talking about words. Mm. And a great way to do that is when you're reading books and stories to kids. Yeah, so okay. in kids' books, there are lots of fantastic words that kids don't necessarily know what they mean. Mm. So they're what we call tier two words. So they're not the words that you could easily show a picture of. Okay. So like a tier one or a level one word would be things like, you know, couch, cushion, uh, chair. You can show pictures of that. Mm. They can learn it. Yes. Kids are pretty good at picking those ones up because they can see them, touch them, feel them. Yeah. Um, what is harder for them to pick up are the words that are more what we call our cognitive words. So words that we use more in the abstract. So things like wonder, consider, investigate, mm. believe. Um, enormous enormous that's a good one yeah. yeah gigantic all of those kind of things where we're starting to make their help their language become a little bit more complex mm. so they're words that are popping up in their stories all the time so it's just yeah. taking a moment to pause at that word and just giving them an explanation for what it means mm. yeah. so I think my, my number one tip would be you don't ask them what it means okay because that's kind of testing them and mm. if they don't really know then they're going to sort of go down a path that's not quite right, yeah. just tell them. Yeah. You might get to the word enormous and go, oh, that means it's really, really big. It's like, you know, the other day we were shopping and we saw that enormous watermelon. It was really huge. Mm. Yeah, it just means really, really big. Yeah. And then keep going with the story. So okay. you're putting it in a context that they know, giving them an explanation and then asking them to, you know, maybe later go back and go, oh, can you think of something else that's enormous and yes. use the word again? Yeah. Yeah. 
That's good, so through the repetition as well. Yeah, so you're teaching them how to think about words, how to teaching them to say the word um, mm. and then that's what that's doing it's triggering like their word learning process so yeah. that as they come across more new words they go ah oh, I actually can stop and think about it and there's some things I can consider mm. yeah. yeah that's good do you have any favorite authors that you come to mind for oh, those uh, really look any book any <laughs> yeah book. look um, there's all the beautiful classics that that we know but don't underestimate just going down the center aisle at Aldi Oh, you can actually yes. get some really great books there. I can vouch for that having shot with you. Got to yep. go down the centre aisle and look but, at the books. <laughs> yeah, so just opening up the book. And it, I guess what I'm always looking for when I choose a book is, is it um, does it have some really great rhyming words in there? Like Because mm -hmm. rhyming books are fabulous. Um, that's a great school readiness um, skill what too. What is that? Oh, that's a whole other podcast okay. when we talk about literacy. <laughs> okay. We'll do that one later. All right. Um, so I look for books that are rhyming. I look for books that have great pictures. And I look for books that have interesting words in them. Okay. Yeah. So rhyming, good pictures, interesting words. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's a good thing to look out for next time you're book shopping. I like that tip of emphasizing the words that you're learning in books in conversation and relating it to stories and getting them thinking about yeah. that throughout the week. That's really good. So is conversation also one of those key skills that we should be looking out for? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, we all want our little kids to go off to school and make new friends and have a beautiful social experience. So developing conversation skills with them is um, really, really helpful. Mm. Yeah. And I guess one of the best ways to do that, we've talked in other podcasts about specifics, but in yes. general, just modeling that for them and just showing them how conversations go. Mm. Probably playing role play games with them is really good, making sure they've got these beautiful creative ideas of how to play together. Mm. Yeah. Um, that's really important because in your role play, you're developing conversations as different characters, taking on new identities, mm. seeing things from other people's perspective. That's going to really help their connection points at school and help them develop those conversational skills as well. Yeah, yeah. I know sometimes when I go into preschools or into schools and we and I get to play with the kids, which I love, mm. you know, we could be doing anything from running a shop to playing with our imaginary dragons to flying to the moon, but just getting them that idea that they, they've got these beautiful play scenarios, but they've got the language and the conversations you can have around those. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And what's another one, another key communication skill we should be looking out for? Well, I guess it kind of ties in with the conversations, um, is just paying attention to nonverbal cues, mm, okay. like just getting them aware of what people are really meaning when they've got certain facial expressions or when they're, um, you know, if people are, if they go up to play with a child in the playground, for example, at the park and the child runs away from them, that's a nonverbal cue. Maybe just help them understand perhaps what was going on. Mm. Um, just start kind of talking them through different things that they're, they're experiencing. Yeah. Just teaching them how to be thinking about um, other people's responses and reactions. Uh, making sure that they've got that awareness of where you should stand when you're talking to someone, you know, not right up in their face. Yes. I think particularly yeah. for little preschoolers, they're often beautifully touchy-feely kids, which is gorgeous. Mm. But then when they're heading off to school, just teaching them the non-verbals that, you know what, it's probably not appropriate to be hugging your teacher all the time or you can't yeah. just run up and kiss your best friend necessarily. <laughs> You've got to learn some of those spatial um, yeah. skills yeah which could be another thing I guess that you could work on through role play as well perfect Just modeling yeah. conversations you know playing doctor's appointments playing grocery store mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right exactly yeah. yeah yeah that's really good and so to wrap all of this up all of these key communication skills that we're wanting to grow in our kids what would be three go-to activities that would really boost these skills for our kids okay uh, I'll choose, I'd say, games like Simon Says because mm. it's developing listening but the other key for that is you can actually help them develop the ability to listen for multiple pieces of information. Yes. So with kids, obviously when you go to school, you're going to be starting to hear longer instructions like before you go to lunch, I want you to pack your book away and put it in your box and then bring me your worksheet. Yes. Well, that's a huge amount of information for a child to yeah, remember yeah. and actually be able to follow through. So, you know, just playing games like that where they're actually having to remember increasingly more and more bits mm. of information is great. So I'd say mm -hmm. that one. I'd say definitely reading books. Yes. Reading books and having conversations. We love books. <laughs> we love books. 
yeah. having conversations about words and what's going on in the story and being able to help them retell the story because mm. that will give them those skills that we talked about before for expressing their ideas giving yeah. being able to practice giving the context okay so, so re- reading it and talking about it talking about it yes so maybe reading it and then going and telling somebody else about it yeah. and seeing if they can understand the story based on the information that was given. Like, we just read this book. Do you want to go tell Dad what happened in the book? Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, are they okay. you know, giving them the cues to be able to give the right context mm. and then sequence the events? Yeah. Yeah, that would yeah. be good. That's great. Uh, so said, Simon says, reading books and then, you know what, just play. Yeah. Just really get down and play, you know, get out the, the cars and have a whole story going on with what's going on with the cars or... You know, the dress ups or just getting together and playing, just role playing and having fun. So Mm. maybe going to the park as a family and suddenly, you know, that fort that in the park can become a castle. And Mm. then everyone's got a role to play and everyone can take turns in helping direct the play and and giving that scripting. Just gives you the opportunity to practice, um, I guess, organizing play and directing play, using language to connect with each other and share your ideas about Mm. how things should happen. And it builds vocabulary and just teaches our little ones how to, I guess, become a little bit more um, connected with each other through conversations, through negotiating play rules, all of those kind of things that they're really going to need quite Mm. intensively in the playground at school. Yeah. There's really so much to it when you think about it. You think of play as such a simple thing, but it's really their world that they learn in. Absolutely. Um, Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing those tips with us and those key communication skills we should be looking out for in our kids. If you want the full and completed checklist, that should be over on our website. So we have a blog covering this topic of preparing your child for starting school. So we've got a whole bunch of resources over there for you to look out for. And we'll be posting some things during the week on our socials. So thanks for meeting with me today, Mum, and talking through this. We hope you have a great week.